Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor. Hello, welcome to the session. Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhad, in which we would look at an example that deals with risk and risk premium, and specifically how to compute the standard deviation as well as the variance. These topics are covered in this, on the CPA as well as the CFA exam, and also covered in an essentials or principles of investment course. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,700 plus accounting, auditing, tax, finance, as well as Excel to tutorials if you like my lectures please like them share them put them in playlist if they benefit you it means they might benefit other people connect with me on instagram on my website farhatlectures.com you will find additional resources to complement and supplement your resource your finance as well as your accounting education when i mentioned the word example it means there was an explanation before i worked this examples so therefore if you are interested in kind of learning about the topic standard deviation variance expected return holding period you want you want to make sure you see the prior recording don't forget to check out my website so this is the problem that we are going to be working with the current value of stock portfolio is 23 million a financial analyst summarizes the uncertainty about the next year holding period return using scenario analysis in the following spreadsheet so we have four scenarios high growth, normal growth, no growth, and a recession. What are the holding period return of the portfolio in each scenario? Compute the expected holding period return and the standard deviation of returns. So we are giving the scenarios, four scenarios. We are giving the probabilities. They always add up to 100%. We are giving the expected year end value of the of the portfolio under different scenarios. We are giving also the annual dividend yield in million for each scenario. So to work this problem, I'm gonna be using an Excel sheet. So I'm gonna to switch to the Excel sheet so it's easier to show you the computation as we, as we go through this exercise. So on the Excel sheet, we're gonna work this problem. The first thing is we want to know is the holding period return for each scenario. How do we compute the holding period return? Remember, the, the, the ending period of the portfolio is given. The beginning period is 23. So if we're going to end up with 35 minus 23, that's going to be the capital gain plus the dividend 4.4 divided by the original value of 23. That's going to give us the holding period return. So simply put, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the formula, how we did this, then copy the formula down for all the resources, for all the other scenarios. So if we take if we take D3 minus 23, the beginning portfolio, plus the dividend, plus E3, divided by the original cost of uh, the original value of the portfolio of 23, it's going to give us 71.3 return. I'm going to, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this and copy the uh, formula for the other returns. So under the normal growth, we expect 34.8%. Under no growth, we expect negative 174 And under a recession, we expect negative 56%. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the probability of that happening, 30%, times the holding period return to find the expected value of the portfolio under different uh, scenarios. So if we take 30 times 7%, is 30% times 0.713 will give us 21.39. Now we can, you know, reduce it to do, to do or three decimal point. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for the other port for the other scenarios, and the expected return of the portfolio, which is an important number, 30.73%. So the expected return of the portfolio is 30.74%. So you were you were you were asked to compute the expected return, and this is the expected return. Now, that's fine. That's the expected return. Now, I want to see the variability. How much this 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 portfolio? How much this portfolio is going to vary? Why is that important? So, re real quick, I'm going to tell you why that's important. Let's assume you are choosing between two stocks, stock A and stock B, and the expected return over 30 years, or 20 years, or for any particular period. But it's a meaningful part period for stock A is 10%, for stock B is 10%. Well, what's the difference between the two? 
Well, the difference is there's no difference from the expected return over the same period. They both earned 10%. But what we want to know is the variability. How much did stock A over the period of time varies? So in other words, we want to know the standard deviation, how much it deviated from the mean, stock A versus stock B. So if the, the deviation for stock A is 15, and the deviation for stock B is 25, we say that stock B is riskier. Why is it riskier? Because in terms of deviation, stock B deviated more from the mean. This is this is to measure the variability of the stock. Why is that important? Because it depends on your comfort. How much? How comfortable are you? Because you want to quantif quantify this uncertainty. How much did stock B deviated? Maybe stock B looks like this and stock A looks like this. So you're more comfortable with a stock that doesn't deviate a lot from the mean versus a stock that goes up and down much more. How do we do this? We compute the standard deviation. How do we compute the standard deviation? First, we, ha we have to find how much does, does each scenario deviate from the mean. So let's find scenario one. Scenario one deviate from the means. Let's see. It deviate from the mean 0 0.40. How did I know this? Well, the expected return is 30.74, but the return is 70.3. So I'm going to take the difference between those two. This is so it's the it, 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 it deviate 40 points. Let's look at B. B, we're going to take the difference between this. Notice B doesn't deviate a lot, only 4%. We're going to do C, not C, the third scenario, no growth. The third scenario deviate negatively, because we don't care deviation, it doesn't matter what, wh whether it's negative or positive, but that's how much it deviates. And under the recession, it deviates a lot, 87%. Okay, so basically here we're looking at the deviation at the range. And let me show you what do I mean by the deviation or the range. I like to, I like to show it to you. So this way you can see it. So this is the expected return. 30.74. Let me change my color because I'm going to be using the, uh, so I'm going to be using this here. Okay, now for, for the high growth scenario, it's, 70.13 so this is the range this is how much it deviate for the second scenario for the normal growth it is right here so notice it's only four four percent which is four so this is what we mean by the range so first we compute the range but notice the range has negatives so we want to eliminate the negatives we don't care about negatives we don't want we don't care about the negative what we're gonna do we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna take the range and we're gonna square it so it becomes positive and multiply it by the probability to find the variance so now we want to compute the variance so to compute the variance we're gonna take the probability which is 30 percent times the, the the deviation raised to the second power Okay, and we're gonna do do so for all three for all four scenarios. Then we're gonna add them up and we're gonna find the variance. And the variance is, let me just show you the variance, the sum of all those three. The variance is 0 0.13405. Now from the variance we could compute the standard deviation. The standard deviation, and basically the standard deviation is the square root, the square root of the of the variance, which is um, 36.67. Now, the question is, what does that mean? What, what does the standard deviation mean? It means within one standard deviation, within one standard deviation, we vary 36.67. That's, that's all what we need to know for now. Now, what we're gonna do in the next session, I'm gonna look a little bit more about this is one, this is one, standard deviation so it varies 36.67 so basically you will see this in the normal distribution later on if this is 30.74 within one standard deviation within one standard deviation which is so we're going to be add let's just add uh, add 30.74 plus 36.67 so within one standard deviation 67.41 and we're going to take the difference now between 30 
0.67 minus 36.67 equal let's just get the function and that's equal to negative six negative six so within one standard deviation we could go up to 67.41 and negative six again we're going to talk about one two and three standard deviation when we talk about the normal distribution i just wanted to show you this now why is standard deviation is important because we could have another stock or we could have another portfolio we could have another portfolio with the same standard with the same expected return but with a different standard deviation so let's assume we have another portfolio and the standard deviation happens to be 10 percent well what does that mean it means the portfolio within one standard deviation we could be at 40.74 or 20.74 it means this portfolio it deviate less deviate less means means it's less risky and that's why we have to compute the standard deviation don't worry we're going to talk about this in the next session where i discuss the standard the normal distribution within the portfolio and explain a little bit more about the importance of the standard deviation all what i wanted to show you here is how to compute the standard deviation in an example in the next session as i said would look at this as always i'm going to remind you to like this recording share it put it in playlist and check out my website for additional resources. Good luck and study hard.